What's up guys? It's Antoine Campbell, the REI Giver. What's up everybody? This is Antoine Campbell, the REI Giver. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very, very, very interesting subject. If you're a virtual wholesaler or local wholesaler, we're going to be talking about scaling with PropStream. In this video, I want to be showing you a few tips that you should be doing once you get access to PropStream. And guess what, guys? If you don't know what PropStream is, it's the world's most powerful data source for real estate investors to acquire data and lightning speed so you can be able to scale your business. If you don't have PropStream, feel free to get my seven-day free trial. Seven-day free trial. REIGiverData.com. Um, just to let you know, I'm taping this show while I'm on the road with this YouTube video while I'm on the road. I'm at a hotel, so you might hear a little bit of voices in the background. Please disregard that. <clears throat> so, that being said, we're going to be talking about scaling with PropStream. And if you don't have PropStream, sign up for a seven day free trial at REIGiverData.com. So, the first thing you do, I'm going to log into my PropStream, right? <clears throat> And the first thing you do in PropStream is you get 10,000 leads a month free. So you need to come up with a game plan. How are you going to disperse these 10,000 leads in whatever particular market? I want to show you some basic standard um, lists that you should be pulling, right, um, in order to really maximize your efficiency. Now, if you're virtual and you're in multiple markets, um, I definitely uh, suggest that you really take advantage of your 10,000 exports every month as soon as the month hit. You take their 10,000 exports and dedicate it to whatever particular market. But we're going to focus on, on one particular market. Uh, uh, I guess we can focus on uh, maybe a virtual market. So maybe we'll focus on um, Ohio. I'm looking to go into Toledo, Ohio. So just like all my other stuff, I do real life examples and I can show you exactly how to work this software. So we're going to go into to, 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 to Alito, Ohio, and we're going to pull a combination of blended lists, right? We're going to pull my standard generic list. And what are some standard generic lists? Guys, get a pencil out. Write this down. This YouTube is nothing more but a free course, right? If you actually take these videos and compile it, this can get you your deal, right? This is not me just blah, 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 some shit. This is some shit that I usually put into my course or, or my webinars or my live events. But I want to really show you that this is a YouTube channel you should be subscribing to and that you can really walk away from every video that I post. So let's go to, and over here, this is the search bar. If you don't really know how to work file string, this is where you really search at. So I'm going to say to Lido. And guys, um, I have a terrible, terrible way of spelling things. So we click on Toledo, Ohio. The first thing you do before you start gobbling up stuff, you want to really see exactly uh, what's going on in this market. And um, this is my first time really put a preview pre pre on Toledo. So this is not some rehearsed uh, script that I'm doing. This is raw content. Remember, this video is not going to be added. I want to upload it straight to my YouTube uh, account as soon as I'm done with it. So look. So the first thing I want to do is look at the MLS, right? <clears throat> I see almost 1,200 properties on the MLS. And I see a lot of pre-foreclosures, right? And um, then I see a lot of foreclosures. But then I see a shit ton of cash buyers. I see 26,000 cash buyers. I see nearly 600 houses um, right here. I see nearly 600 houses with some type of liens and confidences on it. So uh, definitely uh, um, we're going to look into that. And then most importantly, I see 10,000 vacant properties. And vacant properties mean that uh, maybe they use a database from the United States Postal Service and uh, someone determined that this property is vacant because they can't deliver milk. Um, so that being said, then I see almost 11,000 high equity properties. So the first thing we do before we pull any list, um, I just like to kind of just see uh, where all the home values at and see like the high from the low, right? So, um, So we go down, and you want to check these graphs. Let's pull this, let's just try to pull this up. So, guys, if you claim, hey, I need a realtor, I need this, you don't need no realtor right now, guys. You guys are too micro-focused. 
these are some data points that a relative won't tell you anyway that they're going to look at. This is the same of proprietary software that the relatives will use in order to make proper analysis on certain markets. So first thing I want to do is look at, uh, you know, the last 30 days rent change. Rent almost went up 1%, um, right? And here's some statistics. You can print this stuff out too. We're looking at the market trend, closed sales, right? So what are closed sales? Deals that went on the market and they was matched with a buyer and they actually closed on it. So um, that's something in the last 30 days is down, right? But we have, we flooded the market with new listeners. We had over 35% increase in new listeners, um, which uh, added 541 inventory properties. Remember, you got to know your markets. I know for a fact Toledo is not a fix and flip type of market. This is a market where um, it's going to be a lot of buyers, buy and hold buyers, turnkey buyers. Um, so majority of stuff is not going to make it to the MLS. There are plenty of turnkey operators that sell their stuff and pre-sell their stuff before they hit the MLS. It's your job to know exactly who's buying what at what so you don't have to worry about the MLS. So a lot of this stuff you're going to be buying on cash flow. You're going to be buying on a return. And what's a great return? Write this down, guys. Uh, most investors, they want to see between a 10 and a 14% uh, internal rate of return on their investment. Remember, the majority of these investments are between like 15 and 75 dollars. So majority of the transactions, people want to be paying cash with, or they're going to be using some type of private lender. So let's keep on strolling, guys. Um, like I said, the listening trend. We're looking at the listening trend. Uh, and, and you know, the homes being sold, right? Not too many homes are selling. Average days on the market is around 80 days. So that's telling me for a fact that this is not a type of market where you want to fix or flip. But I see opportunities there because at the end of the day, um, inventory is a steady filler in the market. So um, that's just mean the MLS may be not be a good source. But if I actually went to go look at um, county records, it's an old, probably different story. Probably a lot of deals been closed, but they wasn't listed. And it goes back to majority of the investors are buying off-market deals from people like us. So that this this data could sometimes not be uh could sometimes be misconstrued. Not on purpose, not on prop stream behalf of the people who run prop stream, but the fact that you gotta really know the market to do some further investigation, know that you solely can't rely on this data. So since we got that out of the way, right? Let's Let's look at the legend real quick. Give me one second, guys. Try to fix my mouse. So yeah, so let's look at the uh let's look at the estimated value. And right now what I'm doing is I'm just trying to see like where where, where are all the houses less than a hundred thousand? Because it goes back to people that's buying for less than a hundred thousand. Just to get an idea which I'll be flipping. And if you see right up in here, if you zoom in, um let me see, can I zoom in? All up in here, guys. So Warren Sherman. Roosevelt, all these corridors right off of, uh, to the left side of 280, right? And we always use interstates to kind of divide things. So to the left side of 280, on this side, you see a lot of homes that's worth less than 100000 Now let's kind of go to the pre-foreclosures and click on the pre-foreclosures to get an idea um, of what's selling. And you can make money off this pre foreclosure list because look at this. Um, the estimated value, open a bid, 83000 So if I click on this, first thing I want to do, guys, is I want to really figure out, okay, what 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 is old? What's the pre foreclosure details? What is posturing saying it's worth, right? Um, 
Foster ain't claiming it's a maybe a nine thousand dollar mortgage policy. And that's all I'm looking for. So uh I'm on a bit eighty three borrower. The trustee's information, they in Ohio. Unpaid balance, $83,000, right? So you can easily go in here and kind of figure out what's a deal, what's not a deal. And if, say, for example, I clicked on I clicked on this pre-foreclosure stuff, you can select all the records, 740. And then what you do is... uh. You can start filtering stuff, right? Pre foreclosures. If I only wanted three bedrooms, the maximum three. Put three bathrooms, maybe minimum one. And there's no max. Right? What else do you want? So you can click reset. Click reset again. It's gonna go from seven hundred something. Let's exit out this. So once you do that, so here's a here's a basic thing. I'm not gonna hold you guys up too long. Here's some basic lists that you want to pull when you enter a new market or you just start wholesaling. You want to get your pre foreclosure list. You want to pull your list of uh, all the properties with open liens on it, right? And you want the open liens to have equity. Um, and then you want to just pull your high equity list with asset owners. So these are some of the most important lists that you can get your hands on. So once you get to, uh, let's say, for example, we selected um, high equity, right? So now since we selected high equity, if I wanted to get real granular, say for example, um, I'm looking for maybe an opportunity where I want to find people that got some type of um, secondary notes on their house. We can kind of go down to the mortgage info. If you want to see if they have multiple mortgages, maybe one or two, you can do that. Sorry about that, guys. I'm trying to fix the button. So we go down to the mortgage info. So you click filter. I'm not sure why Pop Stream switched that button around. But it's a button where you can actually take and tell what type of mortgage it is. Let's go back. Let's go back, right? And say, for example, we wanted to focus on vacants. So we can take the vacants. I want to focus on only vacants. And the vacants must be. This is the type of list that we put on all our markets. So the vacants. Click on property characteristics. Maybe we want a uh, out of state, right? We want an out of state owner and it's vacant. Or maybe you really want to get detailed at out of county. 
and then the minimum years of ownership. So maybe you just want to own, talk to people who own it for at least 10 years. And then maybe you only want to talk to individuals, right? So now we got 339 properties. And what you want to do is you want to create a list. You want to add these properties. And like I said, in, in Toledo, in these places, you definitely want to try to filter out equity. But it's so hard to really determine the equity in these type of places. So we just focus on all the properties in that particular class. And then we let our VAs and we let our acquisition team figure out the equity or it doesn't make sense to try to lock it up or refer it out to a relative because then you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Because, um, like I said, it's hard to really kind of sell to have equity in these type of markets because you don't really know what it's worth. And then sometimes if your uh, buyer is buying solely on cash flow, the actual equity doesn't matter as long as the, the acquisition price makes sense uh, based on the cash flow. And I'll give you an example. Maybe uh, you can disposition and sell this house at 35000 but the true equity value is maybe 15000 And the reason is because the owner is buying at a 12% cash flow based on how much rent they collect in a month. And that's a whole other video that we could talk about later. And then what you want to do is you want to add to a list, right? And then you want to uh, create a new list. So leader, uh, I think I spelled it right. Sorry. T O L E D O. Absentee. So I say that as Toledo, Ohio, vacant absentee guy. Right. And this is one of your bread and butter lists. What is your bread and butter list? List is where you pull and you know that you put certain filters on a property and you know that the owner. Uh, maybe live far away, maybe they live out of state, you know for a fact it's vacant, and maybe they're just tired of the property. Um, they, if they find it hard to get it rented, maybe it's, it's too much in disrepair, you already had that head start. These are the type of lists that we uh, suggest that you cold call. Cold calling, I promise you. You cold call this list and you uh, and you text blast this list. Text blast it first, and then turn them on cold call for the second round. And, um, that's multiple touches. And if that don't work, then you rotate that list and do it again. Never, ever give up on a list, guys. This data works. It's golden. And I promise uh, you won't be disappointed. Now, if, say, for example, for me, um, I'm the reason why I'm in Toledo because I'm trying to find some apartments, too. So let me uh, show you guys how to pull apartments real quick. Um, that's the main reason why I'm actually trying to find and to lead apartments and stuff like that. Um, I actually got to fund in a place where I can fund up to 20 units. So, let's see. Let's see what we can do. So, you hit filter, property, curve. Let's hit reset, first of all. Let's reset all the filters, right? Property characteristics. I don't want all classification. I want commercial and maybe residential because sometimes the zoning it ain't changed because maybe it's houses in the middle of an apartment building. So you never want to take that away. And then what I want to do is I'm looking for a multifamily five or more, right? And if you really want to get detail, um, you just go down to the commercial side. Because guess what? Anything five or more is considered commercial, right? Anything less than five is considered residential. So always remember that, guys. So they got all different types of stuff, if I wanted to find. But like I said, we're going to be shooting for apartments. And, and for some reason, their apartments are uh, um, categorized. So we're going to add that filter in. If you can add duplexes in if you want. But honestly, I just want uh, apartments. You can add triplexes in.
I'm just making sure I'm not missing any other type of problem. So yeah, so we got that in. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna uh look and see at the results. So we got over uh seventeen hundred results. And the main reason is because a lot of this stuff is like uh fire units. But I promise you if we take out the fire units, we'll probably uh have less results than that. And I'm just looking. See Toledo turnkey. And what I do is uh for me I would just pull this entire list because I don't care because some of these deals we might can negotiate on terms. Uh, some of these deals uh, we can just maybe wholesale to other investors. And that's what you want to do as an investor. You don't ever want to close the door on yourself. You want to keep the door open so when opportunities come, you can assess it case by case, right? Case by case meaning uh, this deal may not be a deal to others, but with a critique of a few advanced creative strategies, it becomes a deal to somebody else. So I download this list. I download this list and add this list to create a new list. Uh, T O L E D O. Apartments. The spell check ain't catching the word apartments. Hey. And then you save, right? And then, like I said, you can always go in and you can export some of this stuff. You can do skip tracing. You click on your properties. And the beautiful thing about uh, your list is show you what's sold, right? Um, and it show you, like, um, you know, uh, what's on the market currently, and you could kind of like filter that out. So I go back to Toledo, right? I click on Toledo 1700 properties, and then, uh, like it just show you 25 25 of them properly sold 15 on the market so we'll click the 15 and then it shows exactly which ones are actually on the market um and if you want to scrub this out or if you want to actually take this 15 properties and actually for me i'm trying to buy properties look at it see what it's on the market for and then try to send them an offer well most of you guys on here probably wholesaling so Yeah, so then now you just take and turn around and you can actually click on the properties. I like all of them. And you can export this, right? And then and you want to make sure when you export it, you properly label um, uh, your property list. So um, I exported that. And once you export it, it's going to download. And guys, I'm telling you, so you can stay organized, create separate folders. Create separate folders. And we're going to save this because when you download it, it don't, it don't actually save it. Now, there's a feature in PropStream where you can start. They just released it. I'm going to come out with a video for that, uh, a part of my second part of PropStream. Well, once you download something, you can automatically save it as inside of PropStream. And then once you download it, it'll automatically be titled as that. So, like, you want to save as um, C Property Export Toledo Apartments. It automatically save it. But you want to make sure you create a folder, right? And here's how you do it so you won't get confused. So you, you right-click it as you're saving it as. You want to right-click it. And then once you right-click it, so you right-click the mouse, 
you hit new and it should open up a um different different topics you want to click folder right once you click folder you want to rename the folder ohio leads and i'm not done yet you go into the ohio leads folder you go into the ohio leads folder and then you click uh save as new like i said it, it might sound over crazy but you definitely want to know where all your leads at and then when you, you start building your team um they'll know exactly what's what and then you put uh um to leader So then after Toledo, Ohio, then you just, now since you're inside Toledo, Ohio folder, now you save it. So instantly, instantly your folder, your folder is automatically organized. And then you can take this folder and you can upload a copy of it into your G drive, right? Um, You can upload a copy of it into your G drive. And as you see on my desktop, we had Ohio, you click Toledo, Ohio, and then voila, the apartment leads. So um, that's the way that you organize things. So that, uh, and like I said, prop string, there's are so many different filters that you can use. We just scratching the surface, right? So um, this button right here, this one filter button can change everything. Let's go to back to Toledo Ohio, right? And let's find, and let's say that we want to kind of find properties. Here's a quick list choice. So you want to make sure, listen guys, like I told you earlier, you want to make sure that you get your pre foreclosures, you get your liens, and then you get your um, absentee owners. That's the first uh, three signs of uh, properties. And then as you get all these leads and you get deeper into doing your marketing, then you can start pulling bad credit list and stack that stuff. But that's a whole nother uh, category. Let's go to something a little different where you want to find a motivated seller, um, but they just recently was on the MLS. So you go down to uh, failed listeners, right? And it's going to um, pull up a list of people with failed listeners. And maybe you want to set your um, ownership information Maybe you want to have them on at least eight years, right? And maybe you want the owner to be an individual and a corporate. And the reason why we want to be a corporate is because sometimes um, investors like to try, let's say, property and test the market first to see could they get the top of the market. And in these type of markets, Toledo, that's not the case. So if you negotiate with an investor, you might come off with a better deal because they probably bought really low. So we'll add these to um classification. Let's focus on residential, commercial. We'll focus on singles. Remember this Toledo, so it's cash flow. Singles and five units. And plus a hundred units, and then apartment house, just to make sure. And now, that's another good list, right? Because at the end of the day, these properties were just listed. So this will work well with text messaging because they just try to text the market, so their uh, attention for a cash offer might be there. They might still want to hear what you got to say about the cash offer. So we found that taking this uh, failed listening and stacking it with like multifamily and all that right now and texting these different people um, would definitely get you some cat leads. 
remember, prop stream is not something that you're going to instantly pull a record and get a deal. The whole thing with prop stream is sifting through the records, right? The, the county records, the MLS records that they compile for us in one organized place. And then extracting as many hat motivated sellers as possible and allowing our team, either that's you or your acquisition person, an opportunity to close that seller. That's all it is, guys. Don't overthink it. So, this the end of this video for scaling with Prop Stream Part 1. Remember, this is an ongoing video. As we get deeper, I'm going to show you some more stuff. I just want to give you a basic understanding. If you don't have a uh, Prop Stream just yet, uh, you can get a seven day free trial through reigiverdata.com. That's reigiverdata.com. We'll hook you up. The link's down in the show notes. Uh, if you like the video, like and subscribe, share it to more people. I'm going to be start doing some videos without my laptop, where we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. And I promise you, the content is going to be crazy. Drop down in the comments what you want to hear me talk about, especially when it comes to virtual wholesaling. If you knew and you just started virtual wholesaling, Definitely grab my virtual health selling A to Z course. We go uh, details. Um, we got the scripts. We got everything you need. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. And if you really want to learn more about this, uh, you should be grabbing your drip ticket, double revenue increase profits. Um, come out April third or fourth to one of the biggest, the biggest uh, awesome events in 2020. Um, we're going to have over 20 um, top performing real estate investors, and um, it's going to be an awesome event. So I catch you in the next video. Appreciate it. Thank you guys so much.